Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this new video. I hope you're all doing well, considering the state of the world momentarily. Um, anyway, today we'll be making an RC airplane from some styrofoam and some electric components. I'm very excited by this project, I hope you are too. Now, let's get started, shall we? I bought some components from China, when this was still possible. And I bought a massive chunk of styrofoam at my local construction market. Now for the proper wing shape I used airfoiltools.com and took the Clark Y model as this is widely used for RC airplane. I transferred it to a piece of wood so that I could easily cut around it with the foam cutter. In these pieces of wood I drilled some holes for skewers. With these skewers I attached the wooden templates to the styrofoam. keep the styrofoam in place. While cutting, I used some weights. I quickly fabricated a terrible foam cutter by shortcutting some batteries over a long thin wire. It is definitely not the best and safest option, but it did the job. I was quite happy with the result. I wanted a clean edge at the back, so I used the wooden templates as a straight edge to cut by. It looks something like this. For the body of the plane, I just improvised a design that, at least to me, looked like an airplane. After cutting it out, I just sanded the edges smooth, which made a terrible mess. The tail wing had to be sturdy but thin, therefore I made it out of cardboard. This ended up a little bit heavier though. At the back side of the tail wing, I cut the edge off at an angle. This way the elevator can move freely in both directions when we attach it. The rudder is made in a similar way. The end is trimmed off at an angle so that the elevator can move freely under it.
With both the rudder and the elevator functioning, we can assemble the tail wing by using skewers as the backbone. To get the rudder working, we need to attach it to a servo motor. The motor requires a spot to stay in, which I will cut out now. The same thing is done for the elevator and the whole thing is glued together. You can see why I cut off the edges at an angle. Now the moving flaps don't bump into each other while falling. For the ailerons I did use styrofoam as it didn't have to be that sturdy and I had a perfect piece lying around. I cut out a piece of cardboard and used hot glue to connect them to the wing, because tape didn't really stick to the stripe foam. Again, the edges are cut off at an angle for free movement. The tail wing can be connected to the body by gluing and skewering it into place. The plane ended up with too much weight at the back, so I had to move it closer to the wing, which I did later off camera. To fix the motor to the styrofoam body, I used a piece of wood to screw the motor on, which could then be glued in place. And to strengthen the bond, I attached a skewer to the wood, which would increase the surface for the glue. I wanted the plane to have a detachable wing for storage matters. Uh, the wing was one meter long and the body just under that, so it's quite large. Now, to do that I stuck some pieces of cardboard to the wing which acted like a sort of reel. This rail fitted over the body, and then with some skewers I created removable pins which locked the wing to the body. Now, because of the tail being too heavy, I also tried to replace some heavy cardboard with light styrofoam, which you see me doing here. It is now time to attach the servos to the rudder and elevator, with servo extenders. These are made of tiny pieces of popsicle stick and a piece of steel wire. I kind of messed up the camera shots, but here you can see the result of the elevator. The rudder was done off camera. The ailerons also needed to be attached to servos. Now to do this I burned some fitting holes in the wing with a piece of steel wire and a cannon.
the servos to the flaps with the servo. I created some wheels by tracing a circle onto some styrofoam and cutting them out. The rough sand is sanded smooth and to create two wheels the piece is cut in half. For the landing gear I used steel wire and I bent it to the proper shape. I cut out another wheel for the rear and use some steel wire to give it its frame. I wanted the rear wheel to turn with the rudder, so I bored a hole through the elevator and connected the steel wire frame to the rudder. Alright, as you just saw, the landing gear wasn't really sturdy. I quickly went to interrupt to tell you that making this landing gear was really horrible. The wheels kept breaking and the wire kept bending through the whole project. Because of this, I didn't film every adjustment properly as this would just take too long. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say, just so you don't get confused. I marked all the places for the components so I could burn them out. The components snugly fit into the nose of the plane, which helped to balance out the tail. Then I wired it all up, and it was practically ready to go. And here you have the finished plane. Now, I have never flown RC airplanes before, so this was very new to me. Here you can see the horrible landing gear, which had to be replaced afterwards for the second time already. <laughs> After replacing it, it was much sturdier. The steel wire still bent a few times, but at least the wheels didn't break. And then it was time for a second try.
it was hard trying to fly with a slight wind and absolutely no experience. I tried another angle of flight, and this was the result. I broke it in half, but luckily this was easy to fix with some skewers and glue. Third time's a charm they say. Well, I guess that's part of the hobby. At least I had a ton of fun doing this project and I might pick it up again in the summer. <laughs> Thanks for watching.